Hey everybody, here we are down on the docks and uh, sorry for the little glitches. We're just starting to learn um, how to get this all going for you guys. And um, I think we should have it ironed out pretty well by the time the end of the show comes around. But, uh, but yeah, here we are down on the docks at uh, Alameda at Marina, at Marina Village um, <clears throat> at the Fairlawn uh, docks. And here's the uh, Ranger 31 tug. So I know you guys just went through a little video on that. Uh, that may have been a little interrupted here and there, but we, uh, <clears throat> we're down here live now. And I'm gonna give you a little walkthrough on the boat. And then uh, we can field questions. And if you want me to show you different areas that, that I have missed, you wanna uh, revisit how things work or uh, engine room or things like that, um, just, text us on the chats and uh and we'll respond to that and start showing you guys around uh but come on board with me and uh we'll show you this uh 2016 ranger tug that has a boat show special price at 249 so it's regular 269 uh twenty thousand dollars off uh so get it at the show and uh you'll have a really good deal so let's go aboard So one of the things I like about these Ranger tugs is that they're kind of like transformers. Um, you can ask your kids if, if you don't know what those are, because I didn't really know what they were either. But um, <clears throat> this boat is uh, a lot packed into it, and they've, uh, they've done a lot of really cool things. Uh, one of the cool things is these outboard seats. Uh, you just open them up and it transforms the cockpit from seating two or three to seating an additional four. So he's kind of hanging out here. Um, it's a great little seat. I can see down the side of the boat. Probably the, not the best place to sit if you're underway. You may get a little wet here. Um, however, if you're up in Lake Tahoe or uh, down in San Diego in the warmer areas, it's probably a pretty cool place to sit and get splashed and enjoy the ride see where you're going so this cockpit also as uh you saw in, in the little video it's got the nice table it's got seats there you can sit over here you can sit up here um lots of places to sit in the cockpit and it's got a really nice hard top um up above with uh, opening hatches so you can keep uh keep good ventilation back here um, it's uh, really a good size cockpit on, on a 31 foot boat. It's just amazing. So, yeah, this is cool. We got another opening um, seat over here that opens up as well. The upholstery on this boat is a leather, uh, the cream colored leather, and, and the brown cloth is uh, really nice and comfortable. And this boat being a 2016 is only a few years old, but it looks like it's almost just come out of the factory. So great, great condition. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I could hang out here all day. This is kind of fun. Uh, so let's take you up on the flybridge because it's sunny out, it's nice. Flybridge would be a good place to go hang out. So follow me up. All right, here we are up on the flybridge. What a great spot. I think I need a Bloody Mary or something. It's <laughs> maybe even two. Um, have my breakfast up here with my coffee and Bloody Mary. Jeez, couldn't get much better than that. Um, up here, you got these two seats uh, facing each other with the table in the middle. Uh, <clears throat> you can sit four here comfortably, kind of hang out. Ranger Tugs makes this. 31 in the two different models. One is this model with the flybridge, um, which really gives you a lot of advantages, or without the flybridge. Um, I kind of like the flybridge. Uh, 
most of the time when you're cruising around, you're going to be up here. Um, unless you're up in the Pacific Northwest and it's raining and cold and miserable out, then you can be inside hanging out, driving from down below and have your coffee in there. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is really nice up here, sweet. Uh, again, you have the same really nice upholstery in it's great condition. There's covers for everything. We've taken them off so you guys can see it. Uh, but yeah, there's covers for everything and um, all the all the cushions, everything's in really good condition. Moving forward. At the helm, yeah, good visibility. I can see the I can see the bow really easy. I can see the stern corners. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's really uh, Really a nice, nice layout. Uh, it's got a really nice Garmin GPS um, touch screen. You guys have all seen that. Just move it around. Um, it's got an autopilot, Garmin autopilot. Um, and this boat has a, a Volvo Penta um, diesel engine, single engine. And it's got bow and stern thrusters. So, you know, both ways. You can move the boat sideways. You can spin the boat around. Yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, we're tied up. We're getting good movement. Um, here's your throttle, electronic throttle controls, and your trim tabs as well. So you can uh, trim this out. One of the amazing things about these boats is that there are no slouches. Um, they'll run 20 knots easy 24 i think is high end on these boats so you can really get around and uh we were out on this boat uh, a couple weeks ago running it around at, at 20 plus knots and uh making some really hard turns and the design of the boat of the hull um is really really interesting if you um, go into a turn really hard it will start to lean and it should just flatten out and go around the turn uh, so, really nice um, handling boat. Um, can't say enough about it. Also, up here, you've got your VHF, your remote VHF. Uh, so, you can talk to those other boaters when you're underway. I mentioned in the video about the um, about trailering this boat. And this whole helm area pivots down uh, to reduce the height and so you don't need to get a over height permit to move the boat. This mast here with your radar and your, um, and, and your uh, horn and uh, satellite dish, this all folds down um, out of the way. All of these seats fold down. So you can really reduce the height of this uh, fairly easily. All of the uh, handrails um, easily come off. Um, so it'll probably take you half an hour to prep the boat to get it up on a trailer uh, and ready to uh, trailer it and not worry about the over height. Um, <clears throat> we got any questions as we're going along here? Anybody, uh, anybody got any questions? Want to see anything we haven't shown you yet? in the uh, cockpit, in the helm area, the bridge. Okay, um, yeah, you know, we're open to questions. Uh, you, can, you can start sending them to us or, um, you know, now, or we're gonna have a Q and A, little Q and A at the end, uh, last 10 minutes or so. Uh, we'll, we'll try to answer all the questions, but yeah, go ahead and ask us questions. So let's go ahead and, and go down below. Here's, here's one question. How does the, the Ranger Talk 31 handle and the, uh, Pacific Northwest. Yeah, this boat is built for the Pacific Northwest. It's, um, you know, you have the in inside helm, you have this upper deck up here. Um, you know, mostly up in the Pacific Northwest, you're on the inside passage, and uh, it's pretty protected in there. It can get a little rough in places, um, but it's, it's usually uh, fairly protected. This boat would do great. And if you're just kicking around the San Juan Islands or the um, 
the Gulf Islands. Um, you know, get between islands is, is quick and easy with this boat. Um, but yeah, I would uh, I wouldn't hesitate to take this boat up there. In fact, it'd be a blast to trailer it up. You could actually trailer it all the way up to Lund. Um, that's north of Vancouver. That is the last uh, town on Highway One, or they like to refer to it as the first town on Highway One. Um, but trailer it up there, put it in the water, and within uh, an hour, you're up in Desolation Sound. And that's God's country. That's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. Um, doesn't get much better than that. And this would be a great platform for it. So, yeah, I would, uh, I, I would take it up there. Um, in rough water, this boat really handles pretty well. Um, it is 31 feet, so, you know, it's not a, it's not a 50 foot boat, but, um, I wouldn't hesitate for a second to take it all the way up to Alaska. Um, it would be a really fun boat to do that with. All right. Thanks for the question. Let's, uh, let's move down and head on down to the, um, to the interior. Okay, let's uh, let's enter, and and you should note that you know, this is a clear glass door, um, so you get good visibility even when you're at the helm from the inside with the door closed. And when you open it, um, you maintain visibility through the window as well, so you keep good visibility. Uh, but yeah, come on inside. Right, when you come in here, uh, on the uh, starboard side is your galley. You have uh, double sinks. You have a two burner electric stove with oven. Um, and then one of the really cool things, uh, again, this transformer thing that they do, uh, if you are cooking at the galley and you need more counter space, then you just fold the seat down and fold it forward and now you have all this extra counter space um, so pretty cool um, refrigerators right here Let's see. fridge with a little freezer right there easy to get to lots of storage all around uh, these have drawers in them the silverware things like that Underneath the settee here is a uh, microwave. So you got your microwave. Wine cooler. Huh? Wine. wine cooler. And wine cooler. Yeah, sorry. And a wine cooler. So all important wine cooler. So six bottles of white wine in there, nice and uh, nice and cold for um, for your evening dinners while you're eating that fish and crab uh, with a nice bottle of white wine to go with that. In fact, we've got some wine to give away. So now beautiful winery um, from down in New Zealand has uh, donated wine. We got a red and white uh, bottle of uh, Mount Beautiful to give you guys. So we'll pick somebody off of the, uh, off of the list and, uh, and award a, uh, a red and white set of uh, Mount Beautiful wine for you guys. Um, cool, so that's first prize. And I can't tell you who it is right now because I'm down here on the boat, but we'll, uh, we'll uh, <clears throat> notify the winner and let everybody know who that is. All right, on this side of the boat, we've got this um, dinette that seats four. Uh, <clears throat> Two forward, two back. You may be able to get three in the other seat, but it would be a little tight. And you have this table with some drink holders and hand holds. Um, and the table folds out for full dining. Or if you're do, just doing cocktails, 
or you only have a couple people on board, swings in. A nice little light up here. No, light switch isn't on, sorry. Um, and then again, the transformer idea. When we're done eating and we're underway, this folds back and this seat back folds up. And now we have a nice seat for your passengers to look forward and hang out while you're underway. Um, they got a nice little table here. So if they want to have their coffee or, or the beer uh, sit down here, they, that, that can be done real easily. The uh, door for the uh, forward seat room, it slides across. And all this teak is in a uh, satin finish. Um, so you're not banging it up in, with a high gloss finish. Yeah, one of the other nice things about this boat is the visibility. You've got these vertical windows, four vertical windows across the front that gives you really good visibility forward. Right now we have a um, seat opened up up front so you can't see forward too well, but that seat does fold down and gives you great visibility. You got opening uh, hatches. Um, Somewhere here. So they open, nice breeze coming through. And the all important drink holder um, <clears throat> for your beer or uh, wine or what have you. So um, pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and then back to the helm, I'm going to fold this seat back and open up the helm seat and I'm going to sit in. So at the helm you got a nice footrest and your instruments and your nice uh, Garmin chart plotter, um, VHF, um, <clears throat> autopilot, windlass control switches, engine gauges, um, everything you need, plus you've got a little remote for your balanced stern thruster. So you can walk to the back of the boat to get off and have this in your hand and run your balanced stern thrusters. So pretty nice. We have a Zoom question about uh, how the electric range does when you're at anchor. Do you have to run the engine? Yeah, uh, good question. So the electric range um, <clears throat> needs a either to be plugged in at, at shore or the generator running. And there is a generator on this boat. So uh, <clears throat> fire up the generator and then uh, get the electric range going. Same thing with the microwave, although the microwave can be used off of an inverter. Um, but yeah, this boat has um, as a generator, it's got air conditioning. Um, so if you're uh, if you're up in the delta and it's really hot out, you're out at anchor. Just fire up that genset. Um, you can hardly hear that generator running. It's nice and quiet. So uh, so yeah, that's that's what you would need to do. So thanks thanks for that question. All right, let's go uh, forward into the owner's stateroom. So up here you got a nice double size bed. It's really wide up at the top end. It's a little narrower down here, uh, but it is a walk around. So I can get around on either side. So you don't have to climb over somebody to get into the bed, uh, which is really nice. Got a little TV. It's got the uh, fusion um, stereo system, air conditioning controls, uh, lights. Um, <clears throat> over here, you've got a little shelf you can put down, kind of a nightstand, or have it up to make it go easier to get in and out of the the uh, bed. Yeah, 
And then we're going to do a little dance here. No, well, maybe not. I'm going to open up the head and we can show you the, show you the head. Um, <clears throat> that's a towel rack on the door. And then we've got um, an electric head, nice electric head, and a vessel sink, um, and, um, and marble countertops or, or uh, granite countertops. So nice full stand-up head. This boat actually has a second head in the um, in the second stateroom. So let's go back to that second stateroom. And we'll show you that. We'll show you the, the head in the second stateroom. What the hell are they on? Okay, second stateroom is a double bed over um, forward. And it's got this little seat. And guess what? Under the seat is a head. So you can come down here and uh, use this head. This is an electric head as well, um, <clears throat> without having to go forward into the other stateroom. So really, really nice little feature. Um, <clears throat> and then there's cushions there where you can make the bet, the, uh, the set key table, you can drop that and make that into a big bed as well. Can you do the head one more time, please? Yeah, so. Here's the um, here's the head right here. Okay. Um, let's yeah let, let's get into the engine room. So to get into the engine room, it's just hold the switch. Okay, my little finger is getting a little tired, but that wasn't too difficult. So this is a uh, Volvo Penta D4, 300 horsepower, um, fuel injected, injected common rail engine. And if you haven't had a common rail engine, um, you should. They're really nice. They're quiet. They, the exhaust hardly even smells like diesel. Um, it's just nice, uh, smooth running, uh, really efficient, um, and Volvo makes a great engine. And this engine, if I recall correctly, is about 200 hours. Um, <clears throat> don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's right around 200 hours. Um, the owners are were really good about servicing it, so it's got all its current services, um, and it's a great engine. Uh, you can also see inside down at the shaft, it's a dripless shaft um, <clears throat> with a vent on it. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's not a dripless shaft, it's a conventional shaft. And then behind that is the, uh, is the Onam generator. So there's your generator. You can see the generator is in a um, encapsulated so uh, it's really quiet and then you put this down the cover down and you can hardly hear that generator all right so we're gonna put this down we got about five more minutes um, to answer any questions uh, if anybody's got any questions um, we can answer them on this boat. Uh, keep in mind, this boat is a 2016 Ranger 31, with a boat show special price of 249. Uh, give us a call, send us an email, tell us that you saw us on um, on the virtual boat show, and uh, we've got some extra prizes to give away for you uh, as well. Uh, if you're buying any one of these boats during the show, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that later today. Um, we have any questions? Any questions, Bruce? Cool. All right, I'll show you just a couple other things, just some other storage back in the uh, 
back in the cockpit since we got a few more minutes here. So this is easy storage. Um, the inverter is over here. And then these are the covers and uh, life jackets. So nice, easy storage. On the other side, some additional storage. Just <clears throat> wide open storage. So lots of lots of storage room on this boat. The fusion speakers back here. A nice little sink here, so you don't have to go in um, to the galley. And use the sink back here. Um, and yeah, and we have a. Uh, the, the all important ice maker here as well. So it's a good way to finish up this boat is with the ice maker. Um, give us a call, we'll get you on this boat. Uh, we can give you a more detailed walkthrough, virtual walkthrough as well, uh, if you would like. And, um, you know, take a look at the boat. It's a great, great boat. So I think we're, we're a wrap and. Shoot another video. What's that? Shoot another video. Um, you want to cue another video? Okay, so uh, we're going to cue up another video for you guys, and uh, we're going to go up to the um, to the office and get that rolling and, uh, and do a little live as well. Okay. Okay. Oh, dropped your dock line. We are heading for our first anchorage of a new. Excited? You bet. The same feeling that I felt the first time I set sail over 30 years ago was inside me. Pulling out past the breakwater, I couldn't help but wonder, what would I be feeling if and when I sailed back in? Would it be a few months? Would it be years? Would I ever sail back in? Those were real questions passing through my alleged mind. No matter what happens, I know I can sail her in. The motor stops. Who cares? I have sails. If the DVD doesn't work, so what? I can fix it when I get into port. Or do without. But cruising as a lifestyle is more than that. You want everything to work, and if it doesn't, you have to fix it. When I last left to go cruising, I was in fairly good shape. Round is a shape, and I had no trouble getting around. But now I'm sneaking up on 70, and I don't feel a lot different. But after a couple of days out there, I realized there were quite a few things I used to do I could no longer do. No, I don't mean things like set sail or drop anchor or steer a boat. Those are no problem but I find myself asking for help when something goes awry in the battery room. Oh, I can still get in there, but it's a lot harder getting down on the old knees, or more importantly, getting back up. But I realize something else a lot more important. When the wind is starting to howl at our first night's anchorage and we were hoisting the hook and setting the reef sail in the middle of the night, I felt alive. No, I don't mean I felt just alive. I mean I felt alive. There was a spark inside me as a sail set with 25 knots of wind blowing us south, and I found myself smiling. Not a big deal, you say? I can't remember the last time I had a big old grin on my face like that. The bounce was back, the feeling was back, and we were alive and well. Sitting there with my life partner, both of us just taking in the night, was like old times. As the wind slackened, without word I would start easing the reef, Jody would ease the sheet lines. When the sails were right for the winds again, we sat in silence, both of us lost in our dreams and our reverie. No words were needed or wanted. We were where we belong, cruising. If something breaks, we can do our best to fix it. If we can't fix it, we can do without. If I can't get in the battery room, Jody can.